Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the third annual Wailing Women on the Wall Women's Conference. It's okay. Come on and stand up on your feet. We're going to bless the Lord, oh, our souls, and all that is within me. Welcome, welcome. I welcome those of you that are joining us live from Facebook. Hallelujah. I am so excited about what the Lord is going to do in this house. Y'all, I have to be honest. It's been a while. Amen. Because we want to set an atmosphere. I already feel his presence. We want to set an atmosphere where he has the liberty to move in the name of Jesus. And, but first, I want to give honor to God and my pastor, Pastor Courtney Jefferson of Living with Hope Christian Center. I thank God for him, for his hand that pushes me. I thank God for his covering over me, and I just bless God for our pastor on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go before God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you are King of King, and you are Lord of Lord. Lord, you are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Nisi in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on and tell them, God, you are God, we thank you for how you have kept us all week long, not just the week, God. We thank you that we are in the land of the living, oh God. God, we bless you on tonight. We have a spirit of expectation. God, we pray for our speaker that is on the way, God. We pray that you would watch over every person that is on their way, God. God, we ask that you would put your angels all around them, oh God. And we ask that you simply be God in this place. Oh, come on and bless the name of the Lord. Can you bless the Lord? Jesus, open this house. We plead 
to be the Holy Ghost, okay? Because I know my knees, you, you know you got problems with your knees, your ain't all that good stuff, just from you getting older. But I would have the nerve to take off and start running. Hey, glory. Because something would be said in the service, God would catch a hold of me, and I would just take off running. I couldn't tell nobody why I was running. All I could tell them is that he's just been that good. Has it been, do you have he's just been that good praise? I got a he's just been that good praise. Hallelujah. So again, the scripture on tonight, the theme scripture, hallelujah, is uh, coming from Psalm 118 and 17. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And y'all, tonight, I know this is a women's service, amen, but I am so honored that my pastor, who is my husband, is in the house, and I'm going to pull on him on tonight. Uh, I told him, be prepared, wear your pink shirt, amen, to represent, and he did so. But I want him to come, amen, and share his uh, testimony, a bit of his testimony with us. Because sometimes when you are standing and you are fighting for other people, people need to know I'm fighting for you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm fighting for you. Because I know what that fight was like. Come on, y'all. Sometimes people don't understand or know what you've been through, but I know what the fight was like. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These are your lady. <laughs> God bless you all on tonight. Truly, I'm just thanking God for the honor. This truly is for me an honor to be here tonight. Um, I would like to thank all of you guys for being here and everyone that's out there watching uh, via Facebook. I uh, want to give honor to Pastor Perron Daly being in the house. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here, sir. Plug in there for him real quick. True Smoke Barbecue be up here tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow. Amen. Noon or 11? Uh, yeah, yeah. 11 o'clock. Amen. So come on after you get this meat on tonight. Come out tomorrow morning for uh, some more meat that's going to be served in here and then go right across the parking lot and get you some more meat. Amen. 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 But truly again, I thank God for being here. Uh, you know, the, the one word that I usually say to sum up how I feel about God, which really isn't the best word that I can even come up with, but it's grateful. Yes. I'm just grateful. Yes. Um, my wife asked me to give my testimony and uh, what I had to deal with, with uh, cancer, prostate cancer. So uh, it was back in 2020. Uh, during the, I guess around April, April, Mayish or whatever, uh, I was at my normal doctor's visit and he wanted to do a PSA, a prostate screening uh, on me. And when it came back, it was said my levels were very high. So he sent me to uh, a urologist that was talking to me about, you know, explaining to me what it was. I, I knew of it because my father had had it. And I, I knew of it, but I didn't know the full extent of it. I didn't know everything about it. Uh, it is it is what they call a, a a minimal cancer. It's not very aggressive or anything, but if not treated, it could turn and affect other organs. So it could become a more serious type of cancer. So the doc that this particular doctor had wanted to just right away go in and remove the prostate. All just want to operate, cut you open, take it out and, 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 and be done. But, you know, I'm of the mind that God gave it to me. I'm going to hold on to it as long as I can. Absolutely. So my thing was, what's the other alternative? And they said radiation. So we went to check out the doctor, uh, Dr. Eric Sutphin, uh, and he sat down with us 
for a good two hours, a little over two hours, just explaining the procedure, explaining side effects. Just he was extremely thorough in what he what he was doing. And for us, it was still you know a question of do we do this, do we do that, Lord? What Lord? What 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 do you want me to do? And at the end of the interview process, he leaned over and asked and said, hey, I want, if it's okay with you guys, I would like to pray for you all and for me. And I'm like, okay, I hear you, Lord. You're, you're talking right now. So the doctor started praying and, and I'm looking for, you know, this is a, a radiation doctor and, and he's a Caucasian. And then, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, we're getting ready to get a watered down prayer, Lord, help him and Lord bless us and amen. And, but I tell you, when Dr. Suffin started praying and he started invoking the name of Jesus, that let me know right then and there that the Lord, that the Lord was talking. And the Lord was telling me, this is what, this is the route that you're going to take. And he explained to me and let me know that I want you to do this because it was an eight eight and a half week process Monday through Friday every single day Monday through Friday for eight and a half weeks and they were letting me know they were saying that uh, halfway through it you know this probably when you're going to start feeling effects and everything and and they were right you know halfway through it was it, it, it was getting hard more and more tired coming home and because I would go to work go get radiation come home Go to work, go get radiation, come on. That was the that was the, the cycle for eight and a half weeks. But even in me doing that, God still blessed because when we went to the, the, the cancer center for the uh, initial visit, one of the ladies, because Dr. Sutphin's office over on Ballas got flooded. We had a real heavy downpour and his office was under his, uh, on the basement, and his office was under four, five feet of water. So they said another tip, sent me to another doctor, and this particular doctor did not accept our insurance, and this was this this was going to be costly. So I was apprehensive about it, and I called Doctor Sutton's office, spoke with the nurse, and everything. I said, "Well, what are we going to do?" Because this office is closed and they don't accept my insurance and the only other office is in Fairview Heights, Illinois. So I would have to go to work right around the corner here in St. Charles, leave here at 3.30 and fight traffic to try to get over to Fairview Heights every single day. And she said, well, let me make a couple of calls, Mr. Jefferson, and I'll get back with you. So in the meantime, we went for that initial visit. And when we got there, because Dr. Sutphin's office was flooded, his uh, uh, accountant person was over at this doctor's office. And when I signed in, they said, Mr. Jefferson, uh, I forgot the young lady's name, but the, she wants to speak to you. So she came out to speak to me and she was letting me know. She said, Mr. Jefferson, I got some good news for you. I say, okay, I'm thinking, okay, the insurance is accepted. Amen, we good. She came out to let me know that because the, the person that owns both practices and I was the only one out of all the other patients that they dealt with. I, the, 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 that person decided because of my situation and because of what God was doing, that he was going to pay for the whole process. Oh, yeah. So I got I to gotta be honest with you. At this point right now, all I want to do is just cry. Yeah. <laughs> because my God is not only doing things, he's showing other people what he can do. Yes. That's the whole purpose of when we have to go through something. Come on. See, we are saved so we go through some things because God is allowing the enemy to do something so that he can come back and let the enemy and everybody else know, this is my child. Yes. I know what my child can do. I gave you permission to touch him because I know he can look at you and laugh in your face. That's what God does for us. Thank you, Jesus. So that's why I say the one word that I can think of is just grateful. Yes. I had to go through all of this. I had to uh, 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 spend the second half of that time really not feeling good every single day. 
but all the while giving glory to God. Because in what he did for me, he was able to bless other folks. Yes. When we realize that this isn't about us. Yes. Come on. When we realize that God is trying to show people what he can do for them just as well as he can do for us. Yes. That's why I'm grateful. Mm. Yes. That's why there's nothing that anybody, any sickness, anything can do that's going to get me down. Yes. There is no pity party. There is, I'm not getting ready to sink down and start sulking and get mad and 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 you know I I I I, I want to think that I'm gonna my mindset is gonna be like that of Job's towards God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. So I said halfway through my treatment, Lord, if I don't make it through this, I'm still going to give you glory and give you honor. Yes, Lord, because you have sustained me all of this time. And if you choose that it's time for me uh, for me to come home, I'm ready. And if you choose for me to stay here, I'm just going to hit the ground even harder for you. Yeah. So I want to thank God on tonight. I know this may have been a little longer, and, and but I'm just I'm just grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful to what our God can do. Yeah. Not just my God. He's not just mine. I can't be selfish like that. Yes. Yes. He ain't going to let me. Because he loves me just as much as he loves each and every one of us. Yes. And if, it, if he can do it for one of us, he can do it for all of us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen.
Yes, the King of Glory. Hallelujah, oh God. Thank you, Lord. You guys can be seated in the name of the Lord. Our uh, the next portion of our service calls for a very special testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this young lady was actually my inspiration. God uh, used her in such a mighty way to let us know that he will allow you to overcome anything. Yes, yes, yes. And it is amazing yes. that the scriptures... Y'all know how you always quoting the scriptures and always saying all oh, this and you know the, the word. But the word does not come alive. It didn't really, really come alive. Some of the stuff that I was saying really didn't come alive until we had to walk through a trial. And I began to see what the word said about God. He will give you the strength. He won't put no more on you than you can bear. Right. So she was the inspiration of the start of this conference. Amen. Amen. The Will and Women on the Wall Conference was birthed through fighting for her very life. Yeah. So at this time, I'm going to introduce uh, my baby, one of my baby sisters. She's not the baby. But one of, amen, and she just had a baby. Amen. So please say amen as Beverly Roche Wren comes forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Um, I have been struggling for like the last past two days because I'm a very shy person. I don't like, you know, speaking in front of a large crowd, but God has been dealing with me like, because I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But I'm like, you know, if I could just touch one person, Come on. Yeah, okay. just one person with my testimony. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, that's all I need. Yeah. So it took a lot for me to come and, you know, do this. I always, you know, want to do what my sister asked because I love my sisters. You know what I'm saying? And um, I am a breast cancer survivor. Amen. for two years now and I want to say oh it wasn't nothing but it was it was a struggle but through you know and I'm saying my sister's prayers and my support that I had during my time of going through my cancer I made it out and you know, a lot of scriptures, you know what I'm saying? By his stripes, I am healed. That was my like number one. And as I was going through, I had Pastor Parashel pray for me. And his very words to me after he prayed was, walk in your deliverance. Mm -hmm. So to this day, I'm walking in my deliverance. Yeah. 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 going through my cancer, I thought I was just going to have like a lump out of me, you know, but I ended up having to get a whole mastectomy. So, and I was wondering like, what, you know, everything was just going good. I'm like, why? Why? And I just had a baby and, you know, I, um, I have eight children. Out of all eight children, I breastfed over half of my children. That was what I loved to do was nurse my children. And so I'm like, you know, I wasn't able to breastfeed my um, baby girl because I was going through the chemo and the cancer. So I'm like, Lord, you know, I love that, you know, that bonding with my children, like, oh, you know, you know, then I'm like, I have to have them a second. Me, Lord, why, you know, why me? You know, why, why, why? But I know you're not supposed to question him why, but I was just wondering, like, you know. So, rewind or fast forward to this day, I just had a baby 
one month ago tomorrow. Oh, wow. And, you know, I was nervous about even becoming, you know, being pregnant with him. And But that was like one of my healthiest pregnancies. I had no complications. And after I had my baby, I'm like, you know, they were like, you know, you can nurse your baby. I'm like, what? <laughs> I how? You know what I'm saying? I only, you know, that one. Like, how? <laughs> but... Oh, oh, I am able to nurse my son. Oh, yes. And you know, in the back of my head, I'm like wondering, how am I, you know, and my baby is, I know he getting fed. He's so chunky <laughs> right now. You know what I'm saying? And the lactation, because I was telling me, you can do it. How do you think women with twins nurse Ooh. their children? So I'm just standing up here today to tell you anybody that's going through anything, it doesn't just have to be cancer, any type of illness that you're battling with, mm -hmm. you can get through it. Yes. With yes. God, yes. you yes. can yes. get through it yes. because yes. by his stripes, yes. Yes. you yes. are healed. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm telling. So right now, today, while I'm walking, yes. my deliverance, I just want to say to anybody that's battling anything, you can do it. Amen. You can do it. Praise God. Pray my strength to the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God. That's okay. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm loud, so it's all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wasn't that such a beautiful testimony? Yeah. And just like with my husband, y'all, when she got that diagnosis, our family once again came together. Yeah. The prayer warriors, hallelujah. Yeah. And the question we asked her was, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to fight. And because she wanted to fight, hallelujah, we put our gloves on with her to fight along with her. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I thank and I praise God. She was truly an inspiration. Thank you, Jesus. She was an inspiration to us. Amen. Yeah. And she was at the time when Pastor Parashram had prayed for her. The, the cancer actually had reverted to becoming aggressive again. And so they wanted to fast track everything. She was pregnant at the time. So they wanted to fast track the pregnancy, uh, you know, because the baby needed to get here so they could do the surgery. So when I tell you she was in a situation where her life was in the hands of God. But God came through. And I'm going to say, add this on to what she said. After she had received that prayer, got the surgery, the, she had gone to her first appointment. And the doctor had, re, they, they have things specialized now where they can highlight the where the cancer actually is and remove the lymph nodes where they perceive the cancer is. He went back to check for the cancer, because you know they check. He said it wasn't that. The cancer was not that. He said, I know she had a cancer because it highlighted over the feet. He said, but when I went back to check it to do the biopsy of it, he said the cancer wasn't there. What did that let us know? God, he is a healer, baby. He can Praise and worship. I want to call for Lady uh, Tyra Kenner. 
She is going to conduct our offering on tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm so excited. I'm just anticipating the word. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm excited. But at this time, she's going to go all the way from uh, Louisiana. Yeah. Come on, y'all. She was in the uh, area where the flood hit. And she got a testimony of a miracle. Yes. None of her stuff. Oh, y'all, we serve a miracle. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's go. Yeah. Come on forward. This is my cousin, uh, who someone who I've always saw as like my big sister. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on up here, oh, Lady Kenner. Kenner. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm the oldest of eight, so I've always taken advantage of somebody else being older than me. <laughs> trying to tell my business now. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, y'all can do a little bit better than that. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, my cousin called me today and asked me to do this. I said, well, I've never raised an offering, yeah. but we know that when you sow on good grounds, mm -hmm. God is going to give you a harvest. Amen. Yes. And I know that these people are men and women of God who stand in everything that they do. They do it to give glory to God. Yes. Whenever you have an opportunity to sow, you can never, there's a saying that says you can't beat God giving. Yes. No matter how hard you try and the thing is, everything that we have, every dollar, he asks us to give a tenth as a tithe. But how many know everything that we have belongs to God? Yeah. Yeah. He could say, give me 80 and you keep 20. Yeah. Hallelujah. So whatever you do, whatever you give, give it and know that God is going to give you a harvest yeah. for that seed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a, give me one second. Let me get that scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. But God is what you go ahead and pray while I'm getting that scripture and see what God is laying on your heart. Some of you already know and been trained to pray before you get to the house mm -hmm. to know what you're going to put in the house. Amen. Uh, give me one second. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured unto you. So I'm just asking you to Give what God is laying on your heart. Yes. It's not going to be in vain. Everything that's given is going to bless the kingdom of God. Yes. Let me say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and honor for this conference tonight. Thank you, Lord God, that everything is met. Every need is met, Father God, and that you're going to pour into this ministry everything that you have. God, you said exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us, God. And we work and operate on the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would touch every person in this room. Father, God, that you would bless every God seed that they plant and bring them forth to harvest. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. And we give you all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you would like to give through Cash App, it's dollar sign living with hope. If you need an envelope, uh, we have Lady Donna. She's in the middle. If you need an envelope, we are also set up through Giblify. If you want to give through Giblify, it's Living with Hope Christian Center. Amen. But it's dollar sign Living with Hope.
God, we ask that you multiply it a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. Amen. Oh, I apologize. You can go to them. I thought you had collected it. I apologize. portion. Uh, just want to remind you guys to join us live on tomorrow. We do have a few folks that will be in house, but we have such a special uh, session planned on tomorrow. We're going to be going live at 9 a.m. And God, this year, the Lord dealt with us about dealing with the body the mind and the spirit. Hallelujah. So on tomorrow, we're going to have an awesome session. Even uh, the morning is going to kick off with a little interactive amen concerning the body. Uh, then we're going to talk about what you put in your body. And then we're going to talk about how the mind is the battlefield. Come on, y'all. Especially in this time, so many people are dealing with things pertaining to the mind and then we're going to conclude with the spirit how you got to be spiritually grounded amen thank you lord so at this time we're going to have green pasture and i apologize i want to give honor to uh the pastor in the house keith Rock. amen pastor keith robinson he is the husband of our speaker. My, my apologies, but I want to honor God for him amen. being with her on tonight. Amen. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually introduce our speaker uh, because we don't know how God is going to move after the worship. And she has the liberty, uh, if the Lord just leads her to go ahead and come forth, come on forth. Amen. Amen. But uh, when I asked her, I said, can you send me maybe four or five things that you would like folks to know about you? She said, well, I just trust the God in you. Just humble. Amen. And let me say this. I met her through uh, the founder, one of our founders, Pastor Barbara Merriweather of our former church. And I do taxes, amen, and she has referred her to me to assist her with her ministry taxes. And then I found out she did hair. So I, I would come to her period. I, unfortunately, I'm not the every week, every two weeks, but she receives me anyhow, amen. <laughs> She's my special occasion hairdresser, amen. <laughs> so when we got things special going on, I call her, hey, can you set me up? So as I have gotten to know her, one of the things that would truly bless me is that there were times, and she didn't even know it, that I would come to get my hair uh, done, and we would just be talking, and it's like the Spirit of God literally let her know what I needed to hear in that moment. 
And I and a lot of times I would leave and I would say, oh, call my daughter and say, I went and got my hair done. But oh, I feel so encouraged. So it was more than just about doing my hair. It was about the ministry. She is a woman of God that I truly uh, honor God for. Uh, when I tell you, uh, I believe she hears from the Lord. Amen. So you guys are truly in for a treat. Prophetess Rosetta Robinson is going to come forth after the worship team. So if the worship team would like to come forth. Amen. Amen. I'm just excited and anticipating the word. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Come on now. So you cleaned me up inside.
So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Of heaven, 
and declare the works of the Lord. And I added something to it. Ezekiel 37 and 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. And verse 4 says, And again he said unto me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight again, O oh Lord. Lord God, for this beautiful willing women on the wall, O oh God. Lord, we, got, we thank you for every soul that have come out tonight to hear what your word is saying or will say to the body of Christ. Lord God, we thank you, my God, for your anointing to fall upon me tonight. To walk around in the valley and see the dry bones, God. Lord God, I thank you for using me as your servant. I decrease and as you increase in me, oh God. Lord God, I thank you for using me as your servant. To go into the valley and prophesy to every dry bones and bring breathe breath into the bones, oh God. Lord God, and speak to them and cause the four winds to come forth, oh God. And breathe breath on the, the dry bones, oh God. And speak life into the dry bones. God, I pray for your children that every ear will hear, every heart receive, oh God. Lord God, stir them up, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you that they will be fruitful and they will multiply. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise and let the church say amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to give my little testimony as well. When Evangelist Grishanda called me and, and asked me if I can bring the word, I was honored. But I had some things going on in my life, and it was kind of disturbing. And the enemy was trying to mess with my mind. But, you know, I was fighting through that thing. And I was like, God, I know that you are God who is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. And, God, I know you're with me. And, and it was a situation that was just bothering me. And I had something scheduled on my schedule for this month. And I had everything mapped out, sister. Everything. See, I was, I was supposed to be going to surgery this month. See, I hadn't even uh, spoke really with my doctor and, and um, scheduled an appointment, right? But I had things mapped out for myself. But that ain't what God wanted. What God wanted was me to have faith, even more faith in his word. Come on, somebody. Because how many know when you get ready to go through something major, the enemy begin to mess with your mind? And see, at one point I was saying, I ain't finna tell the people my business. But God said, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by every word of our testimony. Come on, somebody. And see, right now, even before time, I'm going to speak about this because this is a testimony. 
truly for me. Come on, somebody. God had to intervene that thing because he knew what type of mindset I was in. I had people to begin to pray for me. Come on, somebody. Because I didn't want to go to surgery. Come on, somebody. It's been a long time since I went to surgery. I was younger then. I'm older now. Come on, somebody. But God said, no matter how old you are, when I'm with you, I'm with you. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Come on. So when she asked me if I could come and preach, I say, yes, I will come and preach. And I'm going to tell you something. And then I got another call. Can you come and preach a revival? I said, you know what? I'm just going to put this surgery on hold, and I'm going to let God heal my mind. Come on, son. I'm going to let God restore me because the enemy was trying to take me in the valley. Come on, son. But I said, I refuse to go in the valley. My God, my God, my God. See, sometimes when you're in the valley, you got to prophesy over your own self. Because what happened when Ezekiel went into the valley? God told him to prophesy to every drop bone. Yes, Lord. Yes, So I said, you know what? Uh, this is your plan. He said, I already know the, the plan that I, I have for you. Yeah. It's to give you future and it's to give you hope. Yeah. See, my mind went somewhere else. And see, I didn't share this with my husband. I didn't share this with my family. I didn't share it with nobody. But only God knew. That's why he allowed the sister right here to call me and say, can you preach? Yeah. And I said, what's the thing? She said, you shall live. Oh. Uh -huh. Shalom. Oh. You shall live. Yes. You shall live. Yes. I was listening to my sister, the one that had cancer. Where's she at? Mm. She overcame that thing. Yes, she did. See, that's something serious right there. Yeah. You went through it, baby. Yeah. Some people wouldn't even know how to how to handle that, that situation at that very moment. Come on. The minute they find out that something is wrong, they immediately go into the valley. Come on, son. And it's hard for them to come out. But see, when God said he'll point people over you, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pastors over you that will feed you with wisdom, yes. knowledge, and and give you understanding. And the scripture said, all you're getting, get an understanding. Baby, you had to get an understanding when you were going through that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You had to have an understanding when you went through that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You, you had to know that there was a God. There was a true and a living God. My God. Hallelujah. My God. He said, I was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. And upon the chastisements of my peace, he said, by your stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. You had to understand what that word meant in order for you to overcome that situation. Because cancer ain't nothing to play with. Fibroids ain't nothing to play with. Tumors are nothing to play with. Sickness and diseases are nothing to play with. That stuff take you straight in the valley. Come on. Drug addiction is nothing to play with. Amen. Amen. Nothing to play with. Amen. <laughs> it takes a warrior. Somebody that's uh, on their hands and on their knees and, and, and prostrating before the, 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 the Lord getting on their face, seeking God. Come on, somebody. Yes. Seeking God. Praising him every day. Yes. In the morning. Yes. In the noon. Yes. At night. Come on. Yes. See, when she called me, I had to meditate upon this. Yes. I had to fast. Come on. And I had to pray. Come on, somebody. Oh, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Because we believe in God. Oh. If there is a situation we believe in God for that situation and for that thing to turn. Yes, Lord. Yes, to turn. Yes, Lord. To turn. Yes, Lord. To turn. Yes, Lord. To turn. Yes, Lord. To wake up. To come alive. Uh -huh. To be shaken. Yes. My God. Yes. To turn. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 and 1. We're going to read this. And I'm going to read all the way down to 14. God had to intervene on my behalf to let me know that he is God. Yes, I didn't bring you this for to let you go. Yes. And we have to know, just going to give a little history about Ezekiel 37 and 1. We have to know that. I'm going to do a little teaching and a preaching. Amen. 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 We have to know that the, the children of Israel was in a, a situation in Babylon. They had been in there for over 10 years. Come on, somebody. We already know what they went through, what they went through in Genesis and Exodus and Numbers and Leviticus. Come on, somebody. So they had this same mindset all the way up to the book of Ezekiel. Come on, somebody. They were still in that mindset woo, of the pit, in the valley, in the dumps. Come on, somebody. Hopeless. Come on, somebody. Helpless. Come on, somebody. When God was right there with them all the time saying, look here, I am your God. I am the one who will bring you up out of the wilderness. Come on, somebody. But see, they didn't want to listen. And see, sometimes we still have some folks in this world in that same mindset, brother. Hallelujah. Where God said, look here, I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to take you to a land that flows with milk and honey. But sometimes people in their mind, they still want to sit in the wilderness or in the valley. God said, I'm trying to speak to the dry bones. I prophesied. I use people to prophesy to you. But you're not listening to me. You still want to play dead. You still want to lay down. You Oh my God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So he said, look here. I'm, I'm going to bring you up out of the valley. I'm going to bring you out. So it took them 10 years. In the book of Genesis, it took some of them 40 years, right? Now the, we got a whole new generation that's been in, 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 in Babylon for 10 years. Come on, somebody. He said, look here. It's time to come out. It's time to revive. The kingdom of Israel. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying not to get in my head of myself here. Let's go to 37 real quick. Yes. 37. I'm going to try not to be up here. See, sometimes when I put my glasses on, I see things clearly. I just started wearing them to y'all. And the Lord had told me some weeks ago, when you put them on, you're going to see things clearly. The word of God started waking up even more to me. I mean, it's like real close to me right now. I can, I can truly go into the valley and see some stuff. All right, put them on, put them on. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, somebody. And he lives deep down inside me. So the Bible says in chapter 37, again, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley. Could you even imagine uh, the Lord going to, to Ezekiel and just sitting him down and, and the, the spirit of the Lord came up on him, right? So when you go into the valley, I'm going to do a little teaching here and give you some little nuggets. You just can't go into the valley without the spirit of the living God. Come on, somebody. Come on. You got to have the spirit of the living God up on you when you go into the valley. That's why you got to be careful when some of these people say, I pray for you. I pray over you. I do this. You, you see in their life and it's like a living hell. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. No, you can't pray for me right now. You just came from out the club. Now, I ain't condemning folks that go to the club. And I understand you might know God, but do you have a relationship with God? So right now, if you don't have a relationship and you ain't connected with the spirit of the living God, then I don't know if I can have you to pray for me because I got a serious situation that's going on. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to touch heaven on the count of that cancer. I need somebody to touch heaven on the count of these alcoholics. Let me put my glasses on. Yeah. Woo! I gotta get closer to him. Yeah. And he 
He said he sat me down in the midst of the valley. And I believe in Zeke, you begin to start to think about some things. And he said it was full of bones. And when you go into a place and you just see dry spirits, I know we all been there before. And we go into a place, we say, ooh, those folks look kind of dry. Lord, what's going on with them? You know, you got to realize that all those people don't have the spirit of the living God in them. They just live in life. Come on, somebody. And the Bible said in verse 2, I got to put my glasses on. Yes. Then he calls me to pass them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. Well, what was many? It was many dry bones. He said it was some helpless people in the valley. It was some... It was some alcoholics in the, the valley. It was some homeless people in the valley. Come on, somebody. It was some people that had been molested in the valley. It was some people that had cancer in the valley. It was some people that had fibroids in the valley. It was some people had some confused minds in the valley. It was some people in the valley that just couldn't figure some things out. Oh, my God. It was so many bones. Come on now. Jesus. In the valley. And the Bible said, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, verse 3, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, let me get a little proper and make sure I I, I pronounce my words correctly because sometimes we may have some theologians online say, oh, she didn't pronounce that word right. So let me make sure that I'm pronouncing my words clearly. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, oh, Lord, God, you know. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones. See, the dry bones got to hear the word. Cancer had to hear the word. That's 
why the bones can, can have an appearance where it look good on the outside. But on the inside, sister, there is no life. And we got to realize what breath is. Breath is the spirit of the living God. Yes. Come on, okay. All right. <laughs> Come on now. I hear you. <laughs> he said it was no breath in him. And also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy to the breath. God, the spirit of the living God now is in me. But I got to prophesy to the breath. I got to cause that thing to wake up. I got to cause that thing to, to, to come alive. I got to speak to that thing. If it takes for you to speak to that thing over and over and over again, sister, like you did and like you had your pastors and your sister and your, your brother-in-law and your family. Come on, somebody. They have to speak life into that thing. And see, what happened was when you begin to understand Come on. that there is a God that's on the inside of me. The Bible say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. See, that thing began to wake up on the inside of you. The Bible said when they breathe breath, the Bible said that there was a noise. The Bible said it began to shake. The Bible said the bones came to, to life and it, it came bone to bone. I'm going to get that right in a minute. He said it was bone to bone. Come on, some bone to bone. It was shaking. It was rattling. Come on, somebody. And see, that's what happened. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting ready to get a word. I'm getting ready to get a word. Because he said that thing began to shake together. It began to rattle. Bones to bones. Bones to bones. Some began to wake up there. Some start to come to life. See, we begin to prophesy to that situation. When we begin to prophesy to that situation, oh, when life comes in, when breath is breathed upon you, do y'all know, my God, my God, when God breathed into the, the nostrils of Adam, come on, the Bible said he ended up having life. See, sometimes we got to breathe on that situation. Oh my God. You want to know why you're standing today? Because God came back with a fresh anointing, with a fresh breath. You think God probably has some spirit. God has some fresh wind. God breathed breath on you. God Oh God. Uh, speak to the paralyzed situation, oh God. 
you shall live. Oh God, what is that situation uh, right now? Just take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Hallelujah. God said, look back and think about where you are right now. What is that thing that's causing you to be dry? What is that thing that's causing you to be in the valley? The Bible said, God breathed breath. He said, some things begin to shake. Some things begin to rattle. He said, some things began to come together. That means that the spirit of the living God was right there. Even though they didn't have breath. But when God breathed breath on it, baby, that thing began to live. God You look like you may doing, be doing well right now. Oh, God. But God said, go back. When you was like five years old. He said, I want to get some things up out of you. The Bible said, some folks have not renounced some things. God said, I'm ready for you to renounce some things. It's some things that have been holding you back for a minute. It's some things that has been holding you back. It's some things that has been hindering you. It's some things That's dry right about now. It's the things in your life. My God, my God. Only thing I can say is my God. Because God wants to take you there. God wants you to examine yourself. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to work some things out. God wants to take you to the new level. God say I can't do it right now. Until you think back.
Spirit in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Father, that at this moment, we're going to decree a thing. We're going to believe, God. We're going to have hope. We're going to rise up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we're going to we want to stand up, oh God, because the Bible said that the sinew gives us strength. The sinew gives us power. Lord God, we need all of it to stand, oh God. And most of all, we need, oh God, your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father God, I make a declaration tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That we speak over the nation, oh God. We speak over our homes, oh God. We speak over our children, oh God. Everything, oh God, that was in the valley and that was dry, oh God. Oh God, even those alcoholics that's in my house, oh God. Or in your house, oh God. The drug addicts, oh God. We've been trying to get them, get them together and rise up for the longest, oh God. But Lord God, we thank you that we cause, oh God, we cause and call on the breath to breathe in the atmosphere today and breathe across the nations, oh God. You know, oh God, where the homes are that need your breath to be breathed in, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we speak, oh God, right now, oh God, to our ministry, oh God, that with inside of us, oh God. We thank you, God, that you breathe the breath, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I speak to the angels of the house tonight, oh God. Lord God, I make a declaration and I ask you, God, I ask the spirit of the living God to come forth from the four winds and breathe breath into the ministry. Lord God, we that it would be fruitful and it would multiply in the name of Jesus. We speak to our ministry, oh God. Lord God, every ministry that tried to die out, oh God, where the enemy came and took their minds, oh God, and caused them to be redirected, oh God, in a whole nother area, oh God. Oh God, we speak, oh God, that you re redirect Jesus, to come in, oh God, oh God, to line up, oh God, to speak the word, oh God, to breathe life into him, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and people feel like it ain't did nothing, that's the point, they don't do nothing, oh God, but you're calling people in tonight, to, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to line up, oh God, according to your word, oh God, God said this is no time, hallelujah, hallelujah, to be slowful. He said even during the pandemic, hallelujah, he said I gave you plenty of, uh, amount of time, hallelujah, plenty of time, hallelujah, 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 to get your thoughts together and to line up and to make a decision. Choose this day whom you going to serve. He said I will not have you lukewarm. Oh, or straddle the fence. He said, but I need you.
from out of the world. I have called them from the dark into the marvelous light. He said, now choose this day whom you going to serve. God is calling the body to line back up 
and come back into the church house. We got to prophesy over them. I don't care if they are still going to the club. You keep on praying over them. You don't have to let them know what you're doing in your secret place. You just keep on praying. Father God, my child, that went astray. I know your words say, train them up in the way they should go. And when they get old, they should not deport. But it looked like they did something totally opposite of the word. They went away. But God said in his word, it's a time and season for everything. Everybody got to test the water at some point. I know I did. Even though my mother was prophesying and praying over us. But we had to take a little sip here. We had to take a little smoke there. Come on, somebody. I ain't the only one that stepped out and tried to smoke some weed. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all still doing it. And still going to church and praying. See, the Lord, he, he revived me again. He gave me some more. There's no reason to sweep it under the carpet. It's time to lift up their rug. And start cleaning up and sweeping from underneath it. It's some stuff been swept up under the rug way too long. Come on, somebody. See, I'm trying to be good tonight. But I also want the spirit of the Lord to lead me. But it's time to sweep some stuff from under that carpet. That's why he said some was five years old. Some things that have been going on and you just hit it. Some was 15 and you just hit it. Some 20 and you just hit it. Oh, it'll be alright. No, it ain't alright. I heard my sister say earlier she want God to use her. She want God to use her. The Bible says those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. And see, we have to confess our sins. He said many have sinned and fallen short of the glory. But we got to know that we serve a merciful God. And a God who has already dispensed his grace and his mercy upon the earth. If we say, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain, we got to let God open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain upon us. Meaning, Lord, God, clean us up in the areas that we need to be cleaned up in. Lord God, I present myself or my body as a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy and acceptable. It is reasonable service. So God breathed breath on that short skirt. Breathe breath on those pants that sag. See, we got to get it together as a race of people and as a culture and as children of God. In order for God to breathe breath upon this nation, then we have to do our part, sister, and go to the people and speak life. Just as well as God moved Ezekiel by the Spirit, God want to move you by the Spirit. We got a work to do. That's why he want to breathe breath upon the church. He wants your dress to come down long like mine and still look good. Still look sexy. And I'm stylish. Put your long skirt on and breathe breath. 
Man, put your suits on. Like the pastors in the house. And like the brother. Don't show them to be a demonstration. And an illustration to the men in the street. You got to meet them where they are tonight. Even if you got to smack them around. What's wrong with you? I taught you better than this. Or that ain't the way God wants you to be. God want to call you from the darkness into the marvelous light. It's so many people out there in the valley. And we walk around every day and we look at them and go about our business. And say, I'm going to pray for you. No, pray for them right then and there. See, what I started doing, y'all ain't got to be like me. But this is what God put in my heart. People good for saying, pray for me and walk away. Well, if you're in the valley, how can I pray for you when I walk away? I can't. But the Bible said things became together. It shook and bone to bone. It rattled. That's because they was right there in the valley with them. Yeah. So you want to see some things begin to make some noise. You hear me? You want some things to begin to make some noise. If you walk away, it's not making no noise. Who I'm talking to? Is it making sense? Am I making sense? I'm almost finished. We got children smoking weed like it ain't nothing. You know, we was out of town not too long ago. And we seen like two marijuana dispensaries. I mean, they're giving you full access to this stuff. They're making it legal. They made it legal. But the thing is, if the world is giving the people full access, listen to me now, to stuff like this, what the world is doing is corrupting the people's mind. That's why God said breathe breath over the church. Because the church is walking past these people and saying it's okay. And it's not okay. We don't want to get into people's business or pry into their business. But if we see a need, we want to be able to meet a need. Even if you say, look here, can I pray with you? I've seen some people that was homeless on the parking lot of my job. I rolled past them several times, but the manager had already dealt with them. But something in my heart said, you need to go over there and talk to them. You need to go and talk to them. They were homeless. They were in the valley. They were in the valley. But when you see a need, you meet a need. That's why he said breathe breath over the church. God want to do a work within every person in here. Every person in here has been called to do a work for the Lord. And like I said earlier, some of you may not even seen this before. But I'm going to breathe breath over the church and over the ministry. We're going to breathe breath over the dreams that you thought that wouldn't even come to life or come into existence. Stand with me. And then anybody else that need prayer, just lift your hand if you want. You can come to the 
to the altar here. And we're going to breathe breath over that situation. And you may say, I don't want nobody to know my situation. When it comes to God, your situation ain't nothing. Because there is nothing that God cannot do. Where that thing looks impossible, we have to know it's possible. Let's breathe breath, people. Shababa kandurubusaya over the church. He come up by Santa Bosaya. He come up by Santa and a Bosata and a Bosaya. Yet a Bosanda and a Bosaya and a Bosaya. God, you sent me here, oh God, to speak a word into the people's life, oh God. To speak a word over the ministries, oh God. To speak a word over the children, oh God. To speak a word over the church, oh God. Oh God, to speak life even to the dreams, oh God. God, I breathe breath, oh God. Oh God, over the church, he come out. Oh God, I breathe breath. He come out. Lord God, for that thing to live, the Bible said, and you shall live when we breathe breath over it, oh God. Rasha. Oh, on the count of three. Lift those hands up in the air. I call, oh God, Rabbi Shandar Rabosa. Breath from the four winds. He got a Rabosaya, Rabosaya. Eko Babo Sata Rabosaya Rabosa. He come Babo Sata Yosha. Ah, Babo Sata Rabosha. Oh God, prophesy. I command, oh God. Everything to begin to form together and to shake, and the bones they come together and they begin to rattle, oh God, and they begin to make noise, oh God, because you allow your daughter to breathe breath over the situation and to speak life to that situation mainly right now to the church oh god so that the church can live god we breathe breath ah in the name of jesus over the church and over this nation do a new thing in your church God command 
breath to be breathed in you and your wife. When it comes to this ministry, it shall live. Yeah. And it will be fruitful and it will multiply. I speak life and blow breath. Yes, Lord. They will leave and not die. 
life. Your dreams shall live in my life. Your dreams shall live. Are you an evangelist? Not yet. Not yet, but it's coming. This your sister. Your daughter. Your daughter. Your daughter. Beautiful. She's more than a woman bear. And can I? I already started, but I want to make sure it's okay because the Bible said when Ezekiel went in, he began to look around in the valley and he seen some, some dry things. But we want to bring that evangelism to life in us. Things may not be easy as you're growing up in the spirit. But you know what? You're going to be a powerful sister. You're going to be a powerful sister. Can I speak life over you? And you know, sometimes it seems like our children sometimes don't even want parts of, of what we're doing sometimes. <laughs> Train them up in the way they should go, and when they get old, they should not depart. But she has such a sweet spirit, and I know she's already on the right track. But I hear God getting ready to take her to new levels, and she's going to be in the business. He said he gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some preachers, but in that office, God has called her to be an evangelist. Yeah. She's going to work close with you and your husband.
your son, your preacher. Just like Jeremiah, he said, before I knew he was already formed in his mother womb. Yes. He have already anointed him to preach and prophesy to the nation. Yes. He's going to pluck up and uproot, tear down and build up. Evil Shabbat. In the name of Jesus, not only is he a preacher, but he's a prophet. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised by the time he turned two or three, he gonna start praising God and worshiping God. Because he getting his spirit ripped by the time he turned five. He gonna learn how to read early. Because he gonna read the word of God. By the time he turned eight, yeah, couple books. Gonna be a preaching machine. He might, it may sound like he's talking a lot, but let the baby talk. My mom and dad told me when I was little, you talk so much, you must gonna be a lawyer. Now I had something else. That story. Preaching was way from me. I didn't know. I'm just being honest. But it took a prophet to see what was inside of that person. He's waking up. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Y'all don't see him, but he got his head. <laughs> we make a declaration, God, over your baby. You said, unless they come home as a little child, they cannot enter into the kingdom. But God, we thank you that he is already in the kingdom. And Lord, when he begin to walk and talk, Lord God, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. We thank you, God, for your preaching, your prophet, declaring wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And God, in the words, will be fluent. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this little man of God. And the anointing of God is upon him. In Jesus' name. today, God truly spoke a word through me. People of God, sometimes when you're going through, the first thing the enemy want to do is shut your mouth. But I dare you to open your mouth as the uh, prophet ministered on tonight. Hallelujah. Prophesy and speak to those dry bones. Hallelujah. I thank God. Uh, if you are online and you desire to be uh, prayer, you are welcome to inbox us. Uh, you can inbox your prayer requests, whatever uh, the Lord will put on your heart and we will pray for you. If there is someone that desires to be saved, uh, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, you can reach out to us and we will uh, be a, of service unto you uh, as the Lord would have us to be. Hallelujah. If you guys in house, you want to go ahead and stand to your feet. Amen. And we're going to be dismissed on tonight. God, I thank you for this word on tonight. 
God, I pray that you refresh and, and just pour into your servant, oh God. All that was poured out, God, I pray that you would pour into her in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the word fell on good ground tonight, oh God. And we are looking for the manifestation of your glory. God, I pray that each and every person that as we leave this house, oh God, that they receive something on tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch over us. Keep us safe. Give us safe travels. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Greet the preacher.